Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cinecalyx, and this is a special edition of the MFF tier list for Christmas. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to everybody watching out there. And let's get into uh, what is, you know, probably one of the bigger shakeups in the year for the MFF tier list. And I'm not talking about me shaking up the tier list, I'm talking about a certain character, <laughs> Gene Gray, coming in and basically just pushing everybody over to the right side of the um, tier list. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, standard PSA, standard disclaimer, this is just my opinion on the tier list in Marvel Future Fight. There's over 250 characters, so you're more than likely going to disagree with me on at least one of them, and that's totally okay. That's what the comments are for. And uh, yeah, let's just jump in with all of the bolded characters being the ones that I have either added to the list moved around on the list or updated on the list and we're going to start with the um the ones at the back basically um, and then work our way uh left so yeah bishop and magic find themselves very far from the meta no surprise here bishop just straight up out of the meta there's no comment he got a transcendence nothing else unfortunately that's just not enough in this day and age haven't tested him out but i don't think i'm going out on a limb by saying that a character that was released in like what 2018 2018 or 2019 and hasn't gotten an update or a uniform since then is going to be doing anything for the meta of marvel future fight for magic i had a kind of a tough decision i put her in borderline i didn't want to put her in lead slash support because she really just has that 45 percent um increased attack for mutant lead and while it is good like 45 percent is a pretty high number and there aren't many mutant leaderships right it still doesn't really um accurately in my opinion assess the character now i think i may be undervaluing her a little bit by putting her here in borderline i have had some people reach out to me with some clips of her doing some work in alliance conquest and a couple of clips in timeline battle but really um very few players are going to be building magic with this in mind and the fact that you have to max out her build you absolutely need her artifact and even with those things she cannot compete at the highest level um i think that really that really kind of solidifies her her uh, ranking for borderline. Unfortunately, they just didn't give her enough stats. They didn't give her enough effect on her skills. You know, uh, they, they they really have to try hard nowadays to make characters good for PvP, and it's pretty scary because if characters don't have a revive and they don't have the immortality artifact, they're out. They're just straight up out of the meta unless they have insane stats like Hulk does, and even then you could kind of start to argue that that's where it's going. So yeah, as far as Beast being here in lead slash support, he is one of the best leads in the game for that increase to physical attack. And then he also has the support passive. His support passive did take a hit with the new uniform, but thankfully you can always just switch to one of the old uniforms. So I do like his flexibility, but outside of a lead slash support, I don't think he's going to be doing that much work for you. Granted, if you wanted to use Beast, I do think he's going to put up maybe a bit more damage than Dr. Octopus for certain content. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think he could put up uh, similar damage to some of these characters down here in meta-ish. Um, the only thing is he's not going to have as much value as some of these guys who can double as, you know, ABX characters for, for uh, combat supervillain, etc. If you really need them to, whereas Beast is sort of like a dime a dozen combat hero that we just have so many of. He's not going to help you in that regard. I pushed a, uh, I put, I pushed Kate Bishop down a peg just because I don't feel like she's a god of anything anymore. She still helps Makari cancel on some ABX days. But aside from that, there's really not too much to talk about. I also moved down the following characters. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, but I moved Dr. Doom down. I moved Supergiant down. So they moved from meta gods to meta-ish. And then I moved Doctor Strange and Adam Warlock from Meta Defining over to Meta Gods. Now, there is one answer, two words for why I did that. Jean Grey. We'll get to her in just a minute, but basically her gravity and her power set basically just pushes those characters one step down. Um, Doctor Strange, not as much. Like, Jean Grey doesn't have a direct effect on Doctor Strange in the meta. However, it just didn't really make sense to leave him here considering the heavy hitters that we have in the Blast class here in Meta Defining. And I know I also get a lot of flack for putting Doctor Strange a bit higher than he should be. So I'll, I'll concede this one to the audience this time around um, and I'll put him over here. Now, let's get to the, some of the rest of the new characters here. Angel got a new uniform. 
putting him at the bottom of meta ish like he yeah technically he's elite slash support and he's a decent one at that so you could argue that he should be here i do think he's a little bit better than beast um and he has you know some effects that are quite nice and he also has a pretty nice rotation and he's very uh tanky huge survivability uh boon for characters for players who don't know like who don't know how to dodge effects or who just get hit a lot he he represents a, a character that can you know really help you through content by just never dying like it's it's surprising how tanky he is so i wanted to sort of recognize that rather than just putting him into the bin with all of the other lead supports and his lead support is is kind of it's not weak it's just not as good as the typical lead support that we're used to seeing polaris on the other hand very very strong as far as an alternative to storm an alternative to some of these other more expensive mutants she is herself paywall but she was given for free at one star from the future pass it's a bit tricky she also has a pretty tricky rotation so she's not terribly proc friendly but she has gorgeous animations she has good damage on her skills and she has that crazy combo of a lead and a support passive for all mutants so she's basically just a much better version much better version of mystique and so that's really uh, where she finds herself in the top of meta-ish. Not quite a god, but certainly very, very good. And you could argue for her usefulness right now, especially for ABL. Um, you could definitely argue that she should be here in meta gods. But yeah, may maybe Moonstone's a little overvalued at this point. I should probably move her down now that I'm thinking about it here. Let's just go ahead and do this. Um, especially with the introduction of even more villains. We don't really have much of a use for Moonstone anymore. So we'll just do that there and we'll just we'll chalk that one up to um, my forgetful Christmas spirit. All right. Uh, Cyclops, on the other hand, not quite as good as Polaris, but I do think he's a little underrated. So I put him just above Betsy for meta ish. Again, he's got a good, great leadership, good support passive, but I think he can also just do work for you by himself. And again, that's not what everybody uses him for, but you want to represent the totality of what the character can do in a tier list rather than just the one thing that everyone's using the character for, because otherwise we would have a lot more characters in the lead slash support um, because they do literally nothing else but support. Like America Chavez, right? Most people just use her as a 40% HP buff in PvP or for buffing Hulk's damage, but she can actually do some work for you in a couple of other game modes. She has some use in PvP. She's in a, a nice Thanos counter, but you sort of get what I'm saying. So yeah, maybe overvaluing Cyclops a little bit here uh, in terms of damage. He is going to fall behind some of these heavier hitters, but I do think it's the combination of all of his effects and, and all of his usefulness that make him a worthy character overall of being here on the tier list. Okay, and then we get to basically the end. We have the only two characters that everyone is really talking about this uh, this update, this update cycle, Jean Grey and Magneto. We'll start with Magneto because I have more to say about Jean Grey. Um, I'm putting him here in the midst of meta-defining. Uh, you know, I think some people are going to disagree with me, of course. I think some people are going to think he should be lower. Um, Magneto is very, very good. Basically one of the best, if not the best character in the game now for ABX and ABL. His typing, his his blast villain typing doesn't make him as useful as maybe some other characters, but his combination of usefulness and absurd damage, which translates to an absurd score, um, really makes him a must have if you are into scoring for Alliance Battle Legend and Alliance Battle Extreme. Very easy to play, basically no rotation, just slap a rage on and spam his skills. Um, and because his survivability is not really in question versus the Frost Beast or Searcher, he can just exploit the game mode uh, for the full three minutes and just rack up a, an absolutely massive score. So yeah, he's definitely he's definitely very, very in the mix for meta defining as far as those two game modes go. Outside of those two game modes is where my opinion starts to get a little bit hazy, and I think other people are going to have their their, their say in terms of like good or bad. Um, I certainly think he has a place in the meta, but I do think his value in ABX and ABL so, like slips and sort of bleeds over into other game modes. And, and players think like, oh, because he's so good for these other game modes, he must also be so good for, for everything else. And that doesn't end up being the case in some in some situations. He has a survivability issue, I would say. So you know, more testing is needed, obviously, uh, when, especially when I don't have tier fours. I like to undervalue them. I always say that like I, I like to go a little bit under 
rather than going rather than overvaluing them because I don't want to FOMO people in to building a character and then they're oh they didn't like the character and that now it's my fault right so I always do that I always undervalue a little bit unless it's like so obvious that the character is meta breaking that's a different story you know they come along you know once every four four to six months but yeah for Magneto I think he's very very good um he's basically just a better version of Storm but I do think he does have uh, a few uh, qualities to his kit that make him undesirable um, and unfortunately he's gonna be a you know FOMO character because he's limited time so you kind of have to make a decision in a hurry uh, but then we have Jean Grey basically the best character in the game now surprise surprise it's happened again it happened in 2016 it happened again in 2019 and uh, here we are so yeah Jean Grey best character in the game really what is there to say you can build her for PvP and she'll still be insane for PvE. And when I say PvP, I'm not just talking about timeline battle. I'm talking about timeline battle. I'm talking about Alliance Conquest. Like you can literally build her for any PvP game mode, but she will still be very good for you. If not meta, like at the top for ABX, ABL, World Boss Legend, GBR, like she can literally do it all. No survivability issues whatsoever. You can play her like you play Hulk which basically means you can totally ignore what the boss is doing and you can still just plow through the content. It's only at very high stages of World Boss Legend that she's going to be able to die to damage uh, over a short burst of time because otherwise her third skill, if you're pressing it routinely, it just heals her for so much that it keeps her up and running. And then even if you die, you have a second chance. So she's really just that broken. On top of that, if you build her for PvE with a Rage or a Judgment, she is still biblically strong for PvP as long as you play manually. And here's where I think some people are going to disagree with me on Jean Grey's power. I've definitely seen some arguments that Jean Grey is overrated, and I wanted to address those things um, because I don't believe it's a, it's a fact of her being overrated. I feel like it's a fact of her being balanced. So if you play Jean Grey on auto in PvP, even with a really good PvP build, like a you know brilliant rage, uh, brilliant greed, sorry, or a brilliant authority, um, she can still die. She can still lose. She can still get stun locked by other genes and stuff like that. So she's not very good. Oh, you can counter her with a bunch of reflect characters like Silver Surfer and Ancient One and Destroyer. She's not very good, Alex. No, no, no. She's balanced. She has a clearly defined weakness whereby her auto rotation is not very good but literally everything else is. And if you use a greed or if you just play her manually, you can completely negate her weakness to reflect, right? No character is actually weak to reflect as long as they have one iframe skill or two and they do enough damage, right? All you have to do is just go into the iframe. I think it's on four um, and then they're dead. You can just do five cancel four and then they're going to die and then you don't have to worry about reflect anymore. There's reflect on switching and stuff like that. There are some things you have to worry about. Of course, Reflect is not that easy to counter, but it's basically that easy to counter. So, yeah, I think that the, the autoplay rotation is getting a lot of people down, and it's sort of used, in my opinion, as a way to stop the character from being too strong. Because if her autoplay rotation was very good, trust me, PvP would be 10 times the headache that it is now. And if you think back to when we were talking about Gore and we we're like, oh, well, Alex, didn't you get mad that Gore's autoplay rotation was really bad? We did. Yes. The difference is, right, Gore was not unstoppable in PvP, even with a bad autoplay rotation. He was barely hanging in there with a bad autoplay rotation. That's the first thing. Second thing, Gore is nowhere near as powerful as Jean Grey for PvE. Gore is not clearing Dormammu in two minutes. He's not getting 12 to 15 million in ABX with a PvP build and, you know, 8 to 10 million in ABL with a PvE build. He's not doing all these things, right? Ripping through stage 20 of Gene and stage 50 of Gore and all this stuff. He, he's not, right? So that that's really the big difference is that one character having a bad autoplay rotation matters when PvP is really their only staple. But for Jean Grey, in my opinion, it doesn't damage her value because she's still so broken for all and so strong for all of the other pve content in the game that's not pvp so yeah there we go that's the christmas holiday uh mff tier list hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think i don't just mistletoe i don't know what the hell that is um and uh, i'll see you in the next one take care